Uh, I have a friend that removed his front license plate bracket and wants to cover the holes. How would you recommend to cover them? Well, if you're if it's in a if it's in metal, you could just use body filler. You could use fiberglass if it's a metal. Fill it, undercoat the backside, and then just fill it, shape it, prime it, and paint it. Nothing. You don't have to go crazy. I mean, they're just little holes. Uh, literally today, I had to get a safety check for my Tesla. Um, I, so my wife went and the guy, you know, I don't have as many connections as I did here on the island when I used to because I, I was gone for so long. And some of the guys I knew are out of the business. So, like, uh, I went through another friend's uh, safety check guy and um, he was like, dude, just put on your license plate, man, because like these guys don't want to get busted either, you know, uh, because back in the day, I used to be able to just slip some papers, get the safety check without, you know without any shenanigans, but you know, nowadays. So I had to uh, mount my uh, Tesla license plate this morning. And now I got two holes in the, uh, in the uh, bumper cover that I will be filling um, when we custom paint it. So yeah, I would just use body filler, bro. Nothing crazy. I mean, they're tiny little, tiny little holes. B. Baker says, before painting, do you recommend removing the sunroof? Nah, no need. Look, it depends on how tedious you want to get. You know, you could just... Some, some sunroofs, you could literally unscrew the panel off. And the panel will come off and you can paint it separately if you want. You can paint it a different color if you wanted it black or whatever. Um, some of them, you could remove the, uh, the weather stripping. So when you paint, you know, you make sure you get everything. Some of them you got to tape up the weather stripping. Uh, but yeah, man, I don't, you don't have to remove it. I would leave it, leave it as is. This way when you're painting the roof, you could just keep going seamless. Um, yeah, man, carbon fiber hood that's six months old, but has heat damage. So having to remove all of the resin down to the weave, very tedious, uh, not used to having to use 80 grit, but that net abrasives are amazing. But the labor in removing that much material really isn't worth it, even though it's a $4,000 hood. It's a really thick layer, clear and resin. Question I have is I need a good place to buy abrasives. Any good sites you all know of? I am a detailer for 25 years. Um, well, you can get some China made and I've used it on Amazon not bad there's a bunch of different brands on there i have a lot of wet sanding sheets from there uh but i haven't been buying any abrasives because i just get them kovacs kovacs sends me sandpapers anytime i need it they have really good sandpapers so you might want to check out uh, like tcp global ebay also has a lot of automotive stuff clear coats sandpapers and whatnot uh, i would check ebay tcp global um, and if you want to, you know, if you want a good brand of sandpaper, check out um, Kovacs. Very good papers that last a long time. <clears throat> Hopefully that helps. <clears throat> Why would steering column wrinkle when I painted it in only one spot? Use sealer, let it flash. I'm not sure, man. Probably you just had some oil or something, you know something on it on that in that specific area you know maybe something went on it you know wax and grease it make sure it's all clean uh you're basically gonna have to let that dry you're gonna have to water sand it out i would use 600 to 400 sand it out maybe you you could get away with just painting right over that but you might want to prime it put a light coat of primer on that uh scuff it and then just redo it the next time you paint over that area just uh turn up your your air volume and just mist it don't go full-on fluid flow just like mist it spray it on dry coats multiple times coats just like i show you in vip and learn auto body and paint vip uh how to how to paint over an area where you had a chemical reaction uh just to be sure you don't have it again you know so you prime it prep it get it all tacked up ready to go again and then you just hit those areas very lightly 
uh, until you cover and then you could kind of go thicker on on the uh, remaining couple of coats hopefully that helps is that helping guys grit should i use on my wheels they've been painted by someone with single stage but it's coming off in spots so i mean you could you know depending on what type of rim you have if you can get in there with a little da uh and help yourself out you can use a you know you can just scuff off some of that that single stage try to get most of it off i would i would you know if it's peeling like that maybe it wasn't prepped properly underneath the single stage so you can use something like a 150 grit you know 180 150 180 get it all down prime it with a nice 2k filler primer get it all covered wet sand it with 400 grit and uh, you're ready for paint i know it seems like a lot of work but if you kind of want to skip that 150 grit I would just feather everything out with 400, see how it goes. Uh, then you're, you're going to have to prime. I would prime your, uh, your feathered areas. So wherever you're feathered, sometimes maybe you're cutting through the aluminum or steel. I don't know what kind of uh, metal you, you got on your rims. <clears throat> but you're going to have to prime over sanding through multiple coats of a single stage to a primer to a, to a metal. If you have that, then you definitely got to prime that area before you paint it so hopefully that helps guys let me know if that helps <clears throat> uh what's a good way to handle fish eyes i've also heard putting some 5w30 into a gallon of paint which is basically what fish eye eliminator is from the old timers what do you technically which you technically are tony but not lol yeah i mean i am but i'm not you know it's kind of weird but I would, I mean, I come from old school auto body and paint, you know, and um, the methods work, right? And of course, I kind of changed my theories and outlooks, not theories, but, you know, my process uh, with auto body over the years. But as far as fisheye eliminator, there's something, there's an additive called fisheye eliminator by... What brand was that? Fishies or whatever. I forgot what it was called. But I have not heard about. What brand was the brand that I always used? Smoothie. Smoothie was the go-to fisheye eliminator that my pops used to use. But I mean, I don't have issues with fisheye. I don't know why so many people or some people get issues, but I haven't had fisheye issues in a long time. But if I did, I would be using smoothies. It's a little, you just add it to your paint, a squirt or two to your paint, and it does it. Uh, I never heard about adding 5W30 into a gallon of paint. I've never done that. 1,000 project. I remember you were thinking of it a while back. Get a beat up one and spruce it up. That's actually one of, one of the collector cars I would like to get and customize, not customize, but restore and keep. Um, it's a car that I always wanted. I never got one. But a car, I should have bought one. I could have got one with such low mileage in Texas for like 14 grand back in 2018, 2019. Low mileage, 14K. I passed up on it. Next day, it was gone. It had like 20 something thousand miles on it. Uh, I mean, if you can get one at Copart or insurance auto auctions, yeah. I don't do that anymore. I don't really go to auto auctions for cars anymore. I don't do that um, as much as I used to. But, you know, you VIP guys can take all the skills you learn from auto body and from all the all my talks in VIP and, and you can you guys can make it happen. You know, um, best universal atom spray gun. Well, if you if you're a beginner and you just want a starter spray gun, take a look at the X20, either or high volume or low volume, low pressure. They're both good guns. Um, if you wanna go a little bit more higher end, then check out the X27 and the X88 basically comes with two tip sizes, the most common 1.3 and 1.4. So you could spray you know, with a 1.3, see how you like it, spray the 1.4, how you like it. Both 1.3, 1.4, uh, tip sizes are good for single stage uh, paints and base coat, clear coat systems, okay? Or reduced primers. So if you want to spray a thicker 2K filler primer, you could absolutely do that. 
um, by thinning it down 10%, give or take, uh, and spraying it out of a 1.4. I wouldn't use the 1.3, I would use the 1.4. Uh, or you can go and get an upgrade, get the 1.8 tip size if you want to spray um, mixed primer 2K as it should be sprayed. Okay. But reducing it just thins it out. You just got to give it a couple extra coats to fill. That's all it is. And we show you all of that in VIP as well. And on all of my free YouTube videos, man, we got tons of content on my free. Yeah, you're going to love the X88. So there's two versions of this. The uh, Blue Moon, which is this one. Uh, it's just a color difference. Or the Infinity, um, which is like a, a red and blue design this is a golden blue which has like green in the middle and they all come with the gun bud ultra lighting system for free um at zula.com so anyway guys really cool so thanks for tuning in guys hit the like button before you leave and um if you're watching the replay don't forget to check the links down here or the cards over here over here <laughs> and uh, we'll see you later guys peace out